Now I'd like to do some vector examples to kind of, um, well, give you some practice and get you in the thinking about vectors mindset. So let's say we have a hill that is 25 degrees, and I have a car driving up this hill with a constant velocity of 20 meters per second, or maybe we should say speed since speed is the magnitude of our velocity. So as a constant speed of 20 meters per second, uh, the question is, what is Vx and what is Vy? What are the x and y components of our velocity? Okay, so I've started drawing a picture. We're going uphill. We're going a speed of 20 meters per second. So our, our velocity vector is going to be up the hill and is going to have a magnitude of 20. So we can kind of move this into math land momentarily. So here is our picture. And we want to figure out what our x and y components are. So our x and y components are going to look like this. This is vx. This is vy. They're at a right angle. So we have some right triangle trigonometry, right? So. Uh, so we're going to use sine and cosine. Um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so cosine of 25 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So multiplying both sides by 20, I get Vx equals 20 times the cosine of 25 degrees, which is equal to 18.1 meters per second. So that is our x velocity. Uh, Vy, uh, for that, you know, if this was the cosine, that will probably be the sine, but we can check. Sine of 25 is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So the sine is Vy over 20. So Vy is equal to 20 times the sine of 25 degrees. And that is equal to 8.45 meters per second. Um, so that is the answer to this question. We can do a quick check of this answer, right? Um, one thing we could do is see if that squared plus that squared equals this squared, right? Check the Pythagorean theorem. And it does work at least, you know, depending on how you round things, you might get, you know, 19.99 or something like that. But, you know, that's just rounding. These are the right, these are the right numbers. And one other thing to check is we know 25 degrees is less than 45 degrees, which means this side should be smaller than this side, right? If it was a 45 degree angle, then we have a right isosceles triangle so that um, this side is equal to this side, right? If this is, if this is 45 degrees. Um, so for angles less than 45 degrees, right, we get a long side and a short side and that is what we have here, right? Since we have an angle less than 45 degrees, uh, Vy is smaller than Vx. So, you know, another another check we can do, and that makes sure we haven't switched our, our sine and cosine as, as happens sometimes. To continue with this example, we can uh, we can ask another question using the same the same problem. Uh, so let's say, I'll leave that on there. Let's say for this same car, we are asked how much does its height change in 10 seconds? So in other words, the car starts here. 10 seconds later, it's somewhere over here. We don't know exactly where. Um, and we want to know how much its height changes, right? So it starts here and it ends here. Well, this is a kinematics problem. It's um, We're only asking about one direction, but it is a 2D kinematics problem. So the height means we want to look at what's going on in the y direction, and things are moving at constant velocity, so we can use our constant velocity motion uh, y direction equation. That is y final equals y initial plus vyt. Okay, so this is great. We can call this, you know, if we're one of our steps in there is define your coordinate system. So we'll call this y equals zero and 
it's going up to some Y final that we want to find. And Y final is equal to zero then, plus VY, which we know, 8.45 times 10. So that is 84.5 meters above where it started. Um, that's pretty far. That's, you know, several hundred feet in 10 seconds. Uh, that's because 25 degrees is a very steep hill to be going up at 40 miles an hour. So this is um, pretty, pretty streaming fast up the hill for a, for a car. Um, all right, so we haven't brought acceleration into this, but at least we have some, some picture of what a 2D problem looks like with, um, with just our velocity and our position. All right, we'll do one last example using, uh, using velocity vectors. And this is kind of a, a classic physics problem. Let's say we have a river. So we're looking at this from like a top view. And we have a river that is flowing to the right at three meters per second. So our velocity of our river is three meters per second. Uh, and the river is, we will say 10 meters across. So that's about 30 feet across. That's a decent, decent river. Okay, so there's a person here who wants to swim across the river and they are they are a pretty good swimmer. They can swim at two meters per second. And they want to, you know, get to the other side of the river, so they're going to swim, swim this way. Um, and in fact, they're going to swim perfectly in this direction. They're going to swim straight, I don't know, north or whatever the up direction on the board is. Uh, you, we, we might get different answers if they're swimming at different angles in the river, but we're gonna, we're gonna have them swim straight up. So the question is, how far do they get swept downstream when they get to the other side? Uh, we'll ask that first, and then we'll ask um, what what is their speed while this is happening? Okay. So, uh, there's no acceleration in this problem. This is constant velocity, so that, um, again, makes things easier. Okay, so we'll call this, we, we already have our sketch. We'll define our coordinate system. We'll call this the plus y direction and this the plus x direction. We'll call this point the origin where they where they start. So their y position after some amount of time is going to be equal to their initial y position, which we're calling zero. This is the origin uh, plus their y velocity, which is two meters per second times time. Uh, their x position. We'll also call this, you know, the zero of our x-axis here too. So they're starting at x equals zero, and their um, their velocity in the x direction is this three meters per second. So you know they're swimming up, but at the same time they're getting moved right by the river, which is scrolling to the right at three meters per second. Okay, so. This is just equal to 2t, this is just equal to 3t, and we actually know what y final is, right? If they're, if they're getting all the way to here, no matter if they're ending up here or here or here or here, the y distance for all of these is the same. It's all 10 meters, so wherever they end up, they will have gone 10 meters in the y direction, so y final is equal to 10 meters. So if 10 equals 2t, that means t is equal to five seconds. And that's the same time, you know, that's the time it takes them to reach the other bank. And so that is the same time where we want to find how far they got swept down the street, right? So five seconds being plugged into here is going to give us the distance of three times five equals 15 meters. So we're going to have a picture, you know, something like this. They're going to end up over here. Um, <laughs> When they, when they have successfully swum across the river. Um, so 
if we were watching this motion from above with these constant velocities, you know, this person isn't like going like this and then going like this, right? Both of these are happening at once. So it's, it, it would appear from above that they have a velocity that is, you know, diagonal going from this point to this point where the x component of their velocity is three meters per second and the y component of their velocity is two meters per second. So that helps us answer the second part. What is their speed? Well, if these two are the components of their velocity, the magnitude of their velocity, the speed, is equal to the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. So that is the square root of three squared plus two squared. So that's the square root of 13, which is about uh, 3.6. So they're moving at 3.6 meters per second. So that's two in this direction and three in this direction. It is not two plus three is five because they're in, in different directions. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. This is a good lesson in river safety. Um, don't swim in a river unless you're a very strong swimmer. And if you do have to swim straight across a river, be sure to aim upstream because the river is going to push you downstream. Uh, it would be another problem to say, what angle would they have to swim at, at two meters per second, in order to be able to make it straight across? And I think for these, for these particular numbers, I think it turns out to be impossible. So, um, yeah, uh, lesson in water safety. <laughs>